You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Happy to have you here today. Glad you're joining us for this Training Thursday show, where I'm going to explain the eight exercises that burn more body fat than you may think. And the reason why I thought this was a really important show topic to talk about today was that we're so focused a lot of the time on doing cardio and simply burning calories for the sake of burning calories and sweating that we forget that the body, yes, it can burn calories in the short term, but it's so much more important to boost the metabolism for 24 hours after workout, 36 hours after workout, which has been proven to be done. But the reason why this is so important as well is that we stop just thinking about all these short-term actions, meaning like skipping a meal or food banking until you go out that night or doing the cardio, the long-distance cardio, instead of the exercises that I'm talking about. And the reason why that's important is because in the short term, you can do pretty much anything and get great results. You really can. You can count points. You could drink a, one of those horrible, you know, chalky shakes that they sell. I don't want to name the brand. That's what I was just talking about right now that they'll sell it like a Rite Aid or a CVS and you just pop the can open. Yeah, it has lots of sugar, but it's like 200 calories. And so you're just drinking 200 calorie shake that has all this, you know, synthetic stuff in it. it's terrible. And you do another one for lunch. So one for breakfast, another for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. You might know what I'm talking about. And the issue with this is that, yes, you'll lose weight in the short term. You really will because you've reduced your calories, right? So 200 calories for breakfast, 200 calories for lunch. And then if you ate an 800 calorie dinner, well, you're still only at 1200 calories. So that will work in the short term or even if it was a 500 calorie, but you're going to lower your metabolism in the long run. That's the problem. So what I want us to focus on is sometimes trading a few of those short term wins for long-term happiness and long-term results. I mean, that's really what we want. You don't want to struggle every single week to be able to maintain your ideal body. And you also want to be able to have one or two cheat meals per week and not have your wellness uh, drop and not have your body start to gain weight or become inflamed. And you can only do that when your body becomes healthier. That's the only way to do it. Your body literally has to become healthier so that it's more flexible when it's put in situations where you're having some alcohol or you're having some bread or pasta, one of those things. And then again, your body doesn't start to dip. It doesn't start to gain the weight or become inflamed or you start to get run down, brain fog, any one of those things. So let's get right into it. I've got eight exercises that I hand selected out of how many, you know, 10,000 exercises that might be out there. So these are eight. And the reason why I chose these eight is I think you'll be able to then draw from why I chose them to then be able to include others as well. Because of course, we could talk about a lot more. So the first one is one of our favorites. A lot of people on this, the Cabral concept, enjoy working out with kettlebells. Now, kettlebells add a real dynamic to your workout. They allow you to strengthen your shoulder capsule. They allow you to use your hips a lot more. And today we're going to talk about the swing. So why would this burn more body fat than you may think? Well, a lot of times people grab a kettlebell and they're kind of swinging through their legs and swinging up, but they don't realize actually how much muscle tissue they're actually working. And remember, if we can work more muscle tissue in one exercise, we actually get more of a metabolic boost because it's our muscles, besides our nervous system, it's our muscles that increase the energy demand. And I do hope that you tuned in yesterday when I talked about the five factors of why men burn more fat than women, because if you listen to that show, you'll know today, the more muscle you work, the better. So really, really important is when you're doing an exercise like the swing, that you actually work the muscles properly. So that means that you stretch back, not squat, but actually stretch back with your hamstrings and glutes, and then you swing your hips forward and actually squeeze your glutes, that you fire your glutes as that kettlebell moves up to somewhere around chin height or so. Okay. When that happens, you are actually stretching the glutes, engaging the glutes. You're working your hamstrings, you're working your adductors, you're working your core. It's a great, great exercise. And I'm telling you right now, you could even just do them as an interval at the end of your workout. It's one of my favorite things to do with body transformation clients 
We go through the whole workout or we even put it at the end of a superset and we'll do 15 to 20 reps for a kettlebell swing and we'll pick a real good weight. That's what you're going to see today as we go through this. You need to pick a heavy enough weight. Obviously, with good form, you have to maintain good form. That always comes first and foremost. That's paramount. But I want you to pick a weight that challenges you because if the weight is too light with a kettlebell swing, you're simply going to lift it with your arms. And if you do that, you're not going to get a metabolic boost because the boost comes from working those glutes and hamstrings and adductors, which are the inner thighs. So really, really important right there. Okay. The second one I think is going to surprise you. I really believe that a lot of people are going to get a better workout out of doing an upright bike. So that means something like a spin bike or an upright bike, not a recumbent bike where you're sitting down with your back against the the backrest. I think people are going to get a better workout a lot of time on an exercise bike, an upright bike, than they will on a treadmill. And I know that seems counterintuitive, but here's why. A lot of people, when they're on a treadmill, they're holding onto the sides, they're holding onto the bar in front, and they're also allowing the treadmill, because this is what a treadmill does. It's a little different than outside. The treadmill actually pulls you forward. Now, of course, if you think about it, that makes sense, right? It's a belt. It's a conveyor belt, and you're running on that, and it's actually pulling you forward. So you don't get the same biomechanical work as you would running outside. Now, do I think it's bad? No, but most people have some type of knee or lower back-based previous injury, So I don't love all the abrasion that it can cause on the joints. Now, an upright bike, that pedal, it does not move unless you are cranking it. And I love when you can put your feet in the stirrups there, or if you have clip-in shoes, and you can actually use the the non-dominant leg, which would be the, so the top leg is pushing down. That's dominant for most people. That's the knee. So that's called knee dominant. But I like when your foot's strapped in and you can pull up with the bottom foot because that's actually getting a little bit of the hamstring. This can be a very good cardio-based day or even an interval-based day to burn a lot of body fat. So I'm a huge fan of the upright bike. I think it's very easy for 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds to do an upright bike rather than it would be to get on a treadmill or even elliptical. I'm just, I'm a big fan of the upright bike. And the reason is too, you can get yourself a good one for a couple hundred dollars versus a treadmill, which minimum a couple thousand dollars, or you're just not going to get the shock absorption. So big fan of that. What's my third one? My third one is this. It's horizontal chops or chops in general. So across the body. Why did I pick this? Well, the reason why I picked this is that most people are doing chops incorrectly. So I I also wanted to talk about this. But the other thing is that chops, when done correctly, you're actually resisting rotation. So let's say you grab a handle, whether it's a band or a cable or whatever else you would like, and you're going to step out, you're going to have tension on the band or cable, and you're going to look forward at one spot the whole time. Now, If the cable's on the right side of your body, you're going to hold it with both hands and your left shoulder is going to be right under your chin. Now you're going to chop across your body, always looking forward the whole time until your right shoulder goes underneath your chin. Now, if you do that, you're mimicking a golf swing just from the left shoulder to the right shoulder. And what that's allowing you to do is actually work in the transverse plane, but resist rotation, a deep, deep isometric pressure inside the abdomen. That's going to work on what's called a transverse abdominus. And at the same time, you're sitting down in in like a, not a half, but like a quarter squat so that you're deeply rooted into the floor. When you use enough weight for this chop, meaning like if you use good form, like I just spoke about, you're not rotating your neck and you're not rotating your upper body, except for that thoracic part of the spine as you move your arms across your body, you are going to really, really give that entire core a good workout. And that includes your hips because your hips technically are part of your core, meaning like your psoas does count as part of your core. Really, really important. And I see clients huffing and puffing after I give them enough weight for that, for those chops or, or mainly, you know, in my studio as well. We've got a great team. We complete well over a thousand appointments a month and just work with amazing people. And we're just trying to share with you some of those results that we're getting for people. Okay. Now the fourth one I had to add in. So it's a backup to this horizontal chop that I just talked about. And that's because hardly anyone ever does this exercise. And it's very, very different. It's called an overhead axe chop. Okay. An overhead axe chop, I'm going to explain it to you right now. You're going to hold a medicine ball over your head. Don't start with a dumbbell. You can do a dumbbell or you can can do a club in the future when you get a little bit more advanced. But if you're not advanced, put an air axe or a thick pad between your feet and you're going to hold that with your feet. Then you're going to raise the ball above your head and with all your might. Now hold onto that ball hard so it doesn't come back and bounce up into your face. But you're going to hold it hard and you're going to come down and you're going to slam it down onto that cushion, onto that air axe mat. Or if you're in a basement gym, you can slam it right down onto the gym floor. And if you're using a tether ball or like a leather medicine ball that has no bounce to it, you can literally just slam it down, pick it up back overhead again, slam it down. Now, when you do this, you're actually contracting your abs. It's different than the horizontal chop. 
because as you slam down, you're actually crunching. You're doing a full crunch, so it's different than a chop. So it's not exactly the same type of exercise, which is why I want to give it to you today. And the force impact of you hitting the ground if you're holding onto it or the pad, all of that force then is then pushed into your body and your body has to tighten up even more. This is one of my favorite exercises. It's a phenomenal exercise. And since you're also squatting down as you go to chop down because you, you don't want stiff legs, you of course want to bend your knees, squat down as you're chopping, as you're slamming that medicine ball down onto the ground or dumbbell onto a mat or a club onto a mat. It is a tremendous exercise and one that's often overlooked. And so if you haven't heard of this, that's why I wanted to add it in there. That's one of my favorites. You can do it at the end of a workout. Just make sure you flex your abs, okay? So that you're not just rounding out your lower back. If you keep your transverse abdominis tight, okay, the muscles that hold your spine in place, they act as your internal weight belt. If you can keep them strong, you're going to stay safe. That's the bottom line. Okay. Another one that you may not have heard of, and that's why I wanted to throw it in there, is called a commando crawl, all right? It goes by a lot of different names, but I love calling it the commando crawl. What you're going to do is you're going to lie out or lay out a six foot or so ab mat, okay? You're going to start on the very edge of the ab mat in a plank position, a low plank so your forearms are down on the mat. Now, what I want you to do is not use your legs, but you're going to crawl forward, literally moving one forearm in front of the other forearm for 10 times down and 10 times back. Only keep your knees straight, but only pick up your feet to crawl with your arms. So pretend you're in the military and you're crawling under barbed wire. So literally, you're keeping yourself in a plank, which again is isometric, okay? It's working your abs. But in this one right here, since you're staying isometric the whole time, but dynamically moving your forearms, moving your arms forward and back, your body builds up so much pressure internally, which is not a bad thing, that you're working your abs, you're working your core, and it is tremendous what it does on the triceps, on the shoulders, on the chest. Really, really great exercise. I do this a lot of times as a warm-up. So before I actually start my workout, I'll do this exercise as a warm-up. And I do it for anywhere between three and five rounds. So 10 times up, 10 times back on this ab mat, that's one round. 10 up, 10 back without stopping. 10 up, 10 down. That's three rounds. You can do it up to five if you want. Phenomenal exercise. Really, really love it. One of my favorites right there. Okay. So the next one, we're going to switch gears. And number six is low rep squats. So a lot of people think of high rep squats. So they think of doing like 15 reps to really, you know, get that heart rate pumping. And it's true. It does. But the opposite side of that spectrum is also true as well. When you take it down to like five reps for a heavy, heavy weight, believe it or not, that set oftentimes lasts as long as the high rep set. And the reason is that every rep takes so much longer, meaning like you're going down slower because you need to control the weight better. And you're just blasting up. But as you blast up, the weight's so heavy that it takes you a couple seconds to move that weight back up. So if you're used to working out, you've worked out in the past, and you've been working out currently, you could add this into your program. I don't recommend this for beginners because for beginners, I want them to learn form and I don't want them to compromise. Plus, they need to do things like chops and other exercises to make sure that their core is strengthened. Because when you do a squat, whether you have heavy dumbbells on your shoulders or you've got a barbell on your back or a barbell across the front of your shoulders for a front squat, I'm telling you right now, that it's a phenomenal exercise, but you just have to make sure you keep your form correct. And if you keep your form correct, the squat is basically the king of all leg exercises. You know, you have your lunge, you have your deadlift, you have your step up, but it's the squat that is that primary human mover right there that can really build up the whole body. It's a great exercise. It's it's hard to choose between that and a Romanian deadlift, but the squat is, is really the king or queen of all exercises for the legs. All right. So Low rep squats, super important that once you get a little bit more advanced, you have to do them all the time. But once a year, twice a year, try to add in a program where you're doing five sets of five. Keep the first set just a, a strictly a warm up, and then gradually work your weight up until maybe set three. And then you'll do three hard sets of five. That's just fantastic. I mean, I, I love exercise. I really do love working out. And uh, I love being able to teach this stuff. So number seven is jumping jacks. Jumping jacks is old school. I know it is. But I'm telling you right now that people overlook it when it comes to an interval or get it in a quick workout. And I'll tell you why. The jumping jack is different. Okay. It's just, I was going to give you mountain climbers, but everybody knows about mountain climbers. Here's the thing though. And mountain climbers do make you sweat and it's a great exercise, but overlooking jumping jacks. And I'm telling you why. Jumping jacks has you moving in the side to side plane. It's called the frontal plane or lateral plane. Our body is not used to moving in that plane. And whenever you're getting your body doing something that it's not used to, neurologically, that's challenging for the body. So your nervous system is like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, how do we stay coordinated? 
And so what I have people do is full jumping jacks. I'm telling you, if you do full jumping jacks, whether it's part of your warm up or just part of like a Tabata interval, just all out for 20 seconds, or you do it for a minute straight at the end of a workout, I'm telling you right now, don't overlook it. So if you're a personal trainer right now, you're like, oh, jumping jacks so easy. I'm telling you, after you finish a workout for an interval at the end, try doing the 30 second to 60 second jumping jacks all out, meaning like just blast them out. And if you're good at them, well, that I'll tell you right now, then your cardio and your conditioning is phenomenal. It really is. So big fan of those. You might not have thought about it, but that's definitely a favorite right there as well. Now, the last one, I'll tell you, I switched this last minute as I was, I was thinking through these for my notes for this podcast. And that's, I was going to give you box jumps, but I just know right now that too few people can do box jumps and, too, and, and just not a lot of people should be doing box jumps in the first place. Because unless you're used to doing them, unless you are someone who considers themselves athletic, it could be dangerous to jump up on a boxes. People just don't, they don't have the comfort level. And that's okay. Because I'm going to give you an exercise right now, though, that's just as explosive and works maybe even more muscle. And that's frog jumps. So frog jumps are easily one of my favorite things to do as part of a Tabata, as part of an interval, just doing 15 reps at the end of a workout, doing 15 reps at the end of a, a superset to get that heart pumping, to get the muscles working and burn more body fat. So this is a metabolic booster. Why? Well, here's the thing. At no point, well, let me explain what a frog jump is. So a frog jump is hands overhead, squat down as deep as you can, sitting back on your glutes, touch the floor with both palms of your hands right between your feet. So you're in a frog position, right? So you're squatting down like a frog, both hands are touching the floor, and then explosively jump up in the air and reach for the ceiling. Come back down, absorb, and then go right back down, absorbing the whole time. Hands on the floor, spring right back up. So it's, I mean, it's a phenomenal exercise. It will get your heart cranking. It gets deep up into the hamstrings, adductors, and glutes. You explosively drive through your quads and your anterior tib, through your calves as well. Just absolutely phenomenal exercise. And you're reaching up in the air, which is just creating this dynamic stretch through your entire abdomen and lats under your armpits. So it, honestly, one of my favorite interval exercises to include, and again, you don't have to do box jumps if you don't feel comfortable with them. That is a nice explosive movement. But frog jumps, try it for 15 reps. I'm telling you right now, don't overlook it. Try it for 15 reps. One of my favorite exercises. So hopefully that exercise and all the exercises today got you to open your mind a little bit. Really what we're talking about are, I was trying to teach you different ways to move your body. As you saw today, we included some isometric work. We included some swinging work. We included some explosive work. We included some very heavy, low rep work. I'm telling you right now, don't think that there's only one way to get yourself in fantastic shape. There's not. Don't think there's only one way, really, to boost your metabolism because there's not. So if I could give you one takeaway, it's that always keep your mind open, whether it's wellness-based, weight loss-based, or anti-aging. There's so many different ways to incorporate, and you should incorporate all of them, into your weekly plan or monthly plan or quarterly plan, depending on how you're designing your programs, that's where you're going to get the most benefit. So thank you everyone for tuning into another Training Thursday. I always love to get to share with you some of that exercise background that I've kind of grown up with that I've really loved doing for the past 20 years or so. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate each and every one of your listens and each and every one of your shares. Take care. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials 
that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.